Hello there, friends and neighbors. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks. And today we're actually not reviewing a Playboy exactly. Oh, first I wanna show you my necklace. My sister gave me this necklace recently. It was actually a Christmas present, but she forgot to mail it to me. So I just got it now in March, which is okay. <laughs> I do stuff like that all the time too. But I just think it's so gorgeous. We're very different people, me and my sister. Uh, she is still very actively Mormon. I'm definitely not. Um, but she and I can definitely connect on jewelry. She picks the cutest stuff. I absolutely love it. She always gets me the coolest presents because um, I love statement jewelry like that. So great job, sister. You shall remain unnamed. Who would definitely not approve of my reviewing Playboys. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, this is not exactly a Playboy. This is from 1984. This is a Playboy parody magazine. I had no idea that such a thing existed but it's hilarious and we are definitely gonna get ready to roast the rabbit. <laughs> this thing is a hoot and a holler. Okay. So some of the advertisements in it are just like legit advertisements, like a regular magazine. I'll try to, ugh, so you can see it as we go through a little bit better. Oh, here we go. Okay, so for all these editors, they have a picture of them all and every last one of them is smoking a pipe. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so funny. Okay, the Dear Playmates. They have these fake letters in here writing to the different playmates. They're hysterical. Um, okay, okay, so it's hard to sleep at night. I admit it. Promoting an image of women as sexual playthings is really, really, really bothers me. Well, it does. I'm not kidding. But like, okay, I could be a corporate executive working for some conglomerate that has extensive ex investments in South Africa and makes watered down formula for third world babies. Or I could be a scientist working on a grant awarded to me by some company that wants me not to find out that their product causes cancer in laboratory rats. Or I could be a lawyer defending something that is basically morally wrong. It's all a matter of decree, really. Ethics. Go figure them. <laughs> so this whole magazine is very irreverent and along that kind of uh, line. Oh my God, it's so funny. I, I was dying going through this. <sighs> ah, um. In the words of our favorite domestic engineer, if you put a glass of water in the freezer, it will get hard. A male chicken is sometimes referred to as a cock. American author Herman Melville once wrote a book called Moby Dick. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this is hilarious. Make your own playmate. We have the heads, the bodies, and the bottoms from a bunch of different girls. And you can just sort of switch them around like paper dolls. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is great. Ugh. This looks very cool though. No, just private island vacation. What? I want to go on a private island vacation. They have some um, fiction stories that are written in here. I'm sorry, Mr. Bowles. You're too old and disgusting, but I'll love to fuck your son. <laughs> This thing is a great parody of Playboy from the, the letters to the editor thing to the, these illustrations. This is hilarious. Tasting the great wives. <laughs> oh 
I'll just show you the pictures. I bet you'll be able to get it. Our expert taste and rate some of the most delicious wives in the world. This kind of reminds me for some reason of uh, the Real Housewives. <laughs> What a scandal! <laughs> oh my god. And the ratings, and they said Petite Sarah, Blonde de Blonde, Barbara 59 from the Simi Wine, Simi Valley Wines. Rosie de California. This is so funny. This, oh my gosh. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff? Oh, this is funny. Okay. Poll winners, like the Playboy music poll. Jim Croce, 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 how do you say that name? Most overrated dead musician. <laughs> Barry Manilow, biggest nose. <laughs> Joni Mitchell, best yodeler. Uh, Yoko Ono, most profitable rock contract in history. Kenny Rogers, middleest of the road. This, oh my gosh, they're so mean. This is hilarious, however. Okay, oh, you guys are gonna die. Okay, this reminds me a little bit of Bridget Marquardt jumping out of the cake. But she says, guess what, you guys? I just got my period. Ah, I got in the cake. Okay, do you want to take a guess as to who is um, the playmate of the month for this issue? Well, are you in for a surprise? I'm just going to go ahead. really Princess Diana, obviously, obviously Princess Diana is not going to pose for any kind of magazine, but this is hilarious. Our princess has a pair that tops a royal flush. <laughs> oh my gosh. To understand Diana Spencer, you have to ignore the fact that she's the Princess of Wales. Just think of her as a beautiful young girl with floppy ears. All this your highness stuff can really be a drag, she confides over a courtly cup of tea. Sometimes I wish I could sit in a bus with my legs way apart <laughs> and people could see me as me. That isn't hard to do when you're sitting across the table from her, watching her catapult sugar cubes into her teaspoon with into her teacup with a spoon. After all, this is the same Diana whose candor and cleavage have turned the monarch on its crown. Take, for example, her views about straight-laced mum-in-law, who also happens to be Empress of India. One thing I'll say for her, her boobs are much bigger than people think. They're down to here. <laughs> when she dies, Charles is going to run England very differently. He'll have better dances and films with more kissing and not so many rules. Rules, one realizes, hold little attraction for this curvy figurehead. At my wedding, you know, I was not wearing underpants, she giggled. She raised royal eyebrows when she appeared at a state dinner in an Emmanuel creation made of cellophane. Next day, Queen Elizabeth angrily dispatched a pack of leopards to eat her up. I'll have to let steam off once in a while or I'll explode, she says, recalling the time she pantsed Prince Andrew in front of some name I can't, I don't recognize, Min, Mincham Begum? You can't imagine what these people are like. Every time we pose for a picture, Princess Anne pinches me. <laughs> when Diana posed for these pictures, somebody had to pinch us. Sometimes her only ready wit, sometimes only her ready wit keeps things in proportion. Excuse me, she says, her royal blue eyes alight with mis mischief. I can't hear you. Come a little closer. I have an ear in function. It's all been quite a strain for the girl whose main activity before she met 
Her Prince Charming was failing her O-levels, but Diana has a sentimental side as well. My wedding was like a fairy tale, she reminisces. Oh, I should show you these. My wedding was like a fairy tale, she reminisces. What I mean is, Charles is a fairy. The best thing you the best thing about marrying that prince is you don't have to write your own thank you notes. Being married to a future king has its drawbacks though. Men are afraid of princesses, she sighs. Maybe my gatefold will prove to them that I'm just an ordinary girl. And let me prove that having William didn't hurt my figure. <laughs> If I weren't the future Queen of England, I'd want to be Mrs. Hugh M. Hefner. Charles Angel. No one understands noblesse oblige better than Diana. The English are so uptight about being touched. I'm proud of my large breasts. <laughs> being a princess can be quite exhausting. Sometimes I just like to sit down on something long and straight and hard. <laughs> Uh, so this is, these are the other pictures that go along with that. Ah! I think I have nice legs and I don't mind showing them off. Hello? <laughs> Charles isn't king yet, but he already has a scepter and two crown jewels. <laughs> Most men who wear uniforms don't usually give you flowers afterwards. I like to walk around Buckingham Palace without my clothes on, but I li do like hats. Do you think I'm pretty? The queen got very upset because I was photographed wearing a summery frock without a petticoat. But I don't see what all the fuss was about. On a hot day, you can really melt away if you're all trussed up in layer upon layer. I like to feel a breeze between my legs. <laughs> very silly. I think it's hilarious. And I don't think it's disrespectful at all. I just think it's funny. I think the Queen of England was unamused when she saw this. That she thought she was quite scandalized. But she probably didn't say anything or do anything, uh, at least not publicly, because they're very good at the never explain, never complain thing. Or at least they used to be. Certain members of that family could probably learn a thing or two about that. Have you guys read that book by Prince Harry? Someone described it as the world's longest angry drunk text, and it 100% is. I cannot believe the stuff that he wrote. <laughs> so cringe. Oh, this is hysterical. If she loves jazz and she loves hygiene, she'll love this exquisitely made brass bidet. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, and they have this uh, badminton, uh, it's not badminton, what is it called? Um, Batgammon, Batgammon. Uh, that is one of the oldest games in the world. And there's this picture uh, called The Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. It was painted in 1500 and it shows people in hell playing Batgammon. <laughs> Oh yes, and they have a feature in this called, you know how I'll play with us, oh, the girls of, of college, the girls of Oregon, the girls of, you know, whatever the hell. This is the girls of penthouse. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so funny. I actually, I actually love this shoot. I think that this uh, picture is like completely iconic and I need it uh, reproduced so I can frame it and put it up on my wall somewhere. <laughs> I love it! Oh my gosh, look at the power muffs they had back then too. Wowzer. They look like the happiest Horrors in the universe is what they look like. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can't really see anything in this picture, but that's okay. 
<laughs> You're in luck, lady. If this wasn't a cartoon, I'd be a six foot five Negro with a sawed off shotgun. Ah, uh -huh. I don't know about that one, guys. <laughs> I know it's a joke, but. Okay, this is so funny. This car looks awesome. It reminds me of the Thunderbird boat um, from the Thunderbird Lodge uh, in Tahoe. I love these old Gatsby cars. That looks just like the one from the Boz Lerman movie, Gatsby, huh? And this looks like Elon Musk's cars. <laughs> Listen, Elon, I love you, but some of those trucks you've been designing, I don't know about those. Oh, that's pretty. That looks like a Norman Rockwell painting, doesn't it? Oh, this is a Shel Silverstein parody. Because Shel Silverstein did a bunch of illustrations and stuff. He was a really good pal with Hugh Hefner. So that's what this is parodying. Oh, that is funny. That is hilarious. Another fake Playboy cover, but I love this one. Look at her beauty mark. It's a Benny. I actually love this. Beautiful. And <laughs> new Dallas Playboy Club opens. Fabulous Nightery shoots to the top. Legs, legs, legs. <laughs> Our new Texas quarters are a regular breeding ground for gorgeous gams. In fact, you might call them our new hind quarters. <laughs> if every leg in the Dallas Playboy Club was laid end to end, they would stretch from Dallas to El Paso. And if you added what's on top, the whole gall darn load would tip an 18 wheeler. That's why we call our Dallas Club the best little meadery in town. Oh my God. This is hilarious. Oh, that's very bad of them. Put Lee Harvey Oswald in there. And the Playboy interview with John F. Kennedy. Let's see what fake quotes they have from him. We have all too often been uh, humiliated by exploding on the lanching pad. What? Loose boots, uh, tight sheep, uh, warm outhouse. What on earth? However, Marilyn was nothing compared to Annette. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is, we're pretty much just saying that he's inept. <laughs> This is great. Oh, and this, yes, I'm so glad that they have this in here because Playboy had tons of stuff that uh, Ian Fleming wrote, tons of uh, excerpts from the Jane Bond uh, uh, books, and they had uh, one time a contest to be the next Bond girl uh, in the Playboys. I just thought that is so fun and hilarious, and I love these old school 007 movies, Sean Connery. Sometimes I forget his name is Sean Connery and I call him James Bond. <laughs> okay, this is a scandal. But this is satire, so nobody gets too upset, okay? This is South Vietnam sex with a new slant. Don't be fooled by the lazy pace of South Vietnam. Beneath the sleepy, slumbering surface of Indochina's most peaceable paradise lie some sizzling surprises for today's with it wanderer. <laughs> These are hysterical, especially that one. <laughs> Ever heard of South Vietnam? Not until a few weeks ago. Oh wait, that's not what I was gonna, where is that? Oh, oh. 
Juicy K Saint is a fruit vendor in the Sa in Saigon and does all her business from a bike. If you want to munch on something delicious, all you have to do is ask nicely. You won't get the lady, but along with your guava, you'll get a very special thanks. <laughs> Potting up in the jungle tonight. Oh my gosh, is that even the same girl? She does not look like the same girl in these pictures. That's okay. Oh my God. Lenny Bruce, he appeared all the time in there. Don't worry, Mr. Goldwater, I'm on the pill. That is hilarious. In the last uh, one I just reviewed, there was a Goldwater joke on there. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That was from the 60s. This is from the 80s. They're probably just like parodying the, the 60s brand. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Havamore, maybe you wouldn't be so lonely if your cock was bigger. <laughs> what a scandal. And then they have a fake little Annie Fanny or little orphan Annie Fanny. I forget something. Hilarious. The end. Good job for making it through with me, friends and neighbors. I think that that was funny AF. And I don't know if they have any more of these uh, parody versions, but that was a laugh riot. And one more time before we go, the Playmate of the Month. This is Princess Diana Playmate, the fake one. It's fake, everyone. It is obviously fake. <laughs> That was a good time. All right, friends and neighbors, thank you so much for uh, enjoying that Playboy parody with me. And I'll be back with you soon with more Playboy reviews, vintage stuff, Girls Next Door material. And until then, um, don't do anything I wouldn't do, and I'll catch you on the flip side.